Good evening and welcome to this session of Virtual Traditions Weekend. I'm Jeremy Martin, Interim Director of Athletics and your host for this discussion on the value of athletics at William & Mary. There are a lot of bold things going on in athletics, including our new $55 million all-in campaign. A constant remains our emphasis on the whole student athlete, developing young men and women of character who go on to lives of principled achievement. We'll hear from a couple of our student athletes, Nyla Parlard and Carl, Carl Fowler in a moment. But let's begin by talking with two of our coaches, women's soccer coach Julie Shackford, class of 1988, and men's basketball coach Dane Fisher. Julie came back home to the tribe in 2018, and Dane joined us in 2019. Julie, as a former player and now as head coach for the tribe, what would you say is distinct about the student athlete experience at William & Mary? Thanks, Jeremy. I, I would say as a student, I think I was drawn to William & Mary be because it's a place you can do it all. Um, you can compete at a really high Division I level, and you never feel that your academics are compromised in any way. And I think because there's such a high level of focus here and constant work on and off the field, that it, it provides and promotes such a special camaraderie amongst all the student athletes. As a coach, I would say that, you know, if you put in the filters of a, a school with a relatively small population, Division One athletics, and a liberal arts type of education, like William and Mary really just stands alone. Julie, I've often heard you talk, we've often talked about those distinctives and the things that link the generations of William and Mary student athletes. And so now as a coach, how important is, for you, is it for you to carry forward that tradition of excellence? Well, Jeremy, I think it's really important, not only because we are recruiting such high quality student athletes, but they're developing um, here at the college and and they're growing into such amazing people that you, you know you don't know in our group who the next president could be the next executive of a company the next nfl coach or maybe even the next world cup coach <laughs> thanks julie dane as you were rising through the coaching ranks what drew you to william and barry well as i headed to through the coaching ranks, you, know, you start to see that there's a lot of schools out there that are really, really good academically. There's a lot of schools out there that are, you know, really prioritize their athletics and are really strong athletically. Uh, and there's very few that do both. And that was the biggest draw to me to, to William and Mary. And you know, as a coach to have an opportunity to work with young people that really care about their academics and, and they understand the value of a degree from William and Mary uh, the alumni network that it's going to tie them to when they're finished playing is is something that I really value. Uh, but at the same time, we have a lot of guys that that have professional aspirations and and want to play at the highest level. And you know, we saw people, we saw someone that's able to do that here this year with Nathan Knight playing for the Atlanta Hawks. And you know, we want guys that really, really value both sides of the coin. Uh, this is one of those unique places that you can do that. Uh, and then I say the last thing that, that was really attractive to William & Mary is just the community feel here. Uh, it's an unbelievable campus. Uh, it's a great vibe when you walk around and you see other coaches, you see people that work across campus, and uh, it's a tremendous place to raise a family. So uh, it's been an unbelievable experience to this point, uh, better than I would have even anticipated coming in. So, Dan, I know Julie experienced it as a student athlete. I want to talk to you a little bit more about the, your experience of that community. And um, even though uh, most folks couldn't be there, uh, this year, the CA tournament, I think that there were ultimately about 50 of us from the for player families and things like that. And one of the real highlights for me was your daughter leading the crowd and um, let's go cheer to break and play. And I remember looking down at the bench and even the guys on the bench were clapping, um, you know, at the end of that cheer. And just wonder if you could talk a little bit more about um, what that means to you in this community. Yeah, that was that was a pretty uh, entertaining moment. Typically, when you're in an arena. Uh, there's enough of a buzz. You can't really hear the cheers going on. And, and, you know, there's a stoppage in play. And I remember they're cleaning the floor and I kind of hear this, let's go tribe. And I'm like, God, that voice sounds familiar. And sure enough, I look up and it's my four-year-old daughter leading, leading the charge. And I remember my, my wife and I kind of looked at each other and we were like, well, you know, let it, let her go. So, um, it, you know, I think just the, the, the camaraderie you see on campus here um, is really unique. And, and I mentioned it's, Amongst the coaches, yes, but but some of my closest friends that I've met, you know, since being at William and Mary, uh, are people that work in different departments. You know, not not part of the athletic crew, and um, I I think that's a really neat thing. Uh, I think there's great camaraderie amongst the the student athletes and amongst the team supporting one another. Uh, this year has obviously been a challenge in, in being able to do that, but you know, it it, it really has that that incredible blend of of personal connection with our fans, with our community, with one another on campus. Uh, and you still have the high level exposure of Division One athletics, which is really unique. 
Well, Julie, lest I forget it while we're talking about family, uh, you also have a unique experience in that regard and that you've welcomed your daughter uh, into the sorority that is women's uh, women's soccer. And so um, it's been awesome to see you uh, to see you have that family relationship in the program as well. So let's talk a little bit further. Uh, many of our alumni, especially members of the old guard, um, describe describe how big an athletics how big athletics was as part of their social experience as students. Uh, and even as this evolves over the years, um, one of the things we've talked about a lot during the All In campaign is how important community building, uh, building community around each of our programs and for the department as a whole is. And so just wondered if you all would, would describe that aspects about the, the relationship to campus, um, the importance of feeling that support and, and how you engage with, with students beyond just your student athletes. Dan, you wanna take a shot at this one? Yeah, I, I think one of the things that we've really seen uh, over the last year is, is our need for community. And I think we've all seen how much uh, of an impact sports can, can make when it, when it comes to building a community because you know, it's, it's an arena, it's an environment where people can come together from all kinds of different backgrounds, all kinds of different demographics, uh, whether you're a fan, whether you're someone that's playing in the game or, or anyone in between. And you know, it really pulls us together and it gives us a chance to be a part of something bigger than, than all of us can be ourselves. And you know, to have that on a college campus, uh, to have the sports that we have here, uh, to have the connection with our, with our local community, our alumni, our, our you know, the people that have supported us over the years uh, for as long as we, you know, as long as you can go back is, is really a, a, an incredible thing. And, you know, what, what, one, one thing that I've experienced since I've been here is just the amount of people that really care about this place, that really care about uh, how our sports teams do. And, you know, whether it be emails or calls or fans at the games, there, there's just such an unbelievable following. And, you know, I, I really think it just helps, helps build our community. Julie, I wonder if you might talk um, a little bit more. This has been an interesting year with, uh, as we let the seed take root on, uh, on Albert Daly Field there in Martin Family Stadium. Um, there's still been a pretty great atmosphere uh, at the Dillard Complex with folks coming to the games. And just wondered if you might, um, if you might talk about how much that means to your team and, and also just the notion of it. It's my observation and having been at a lot of the games this spring that, that women's soccer is among the programs that supports their their peers as other student athletes the most. And just wonder if you might talk about that aspect of community. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, student athletes first love the connection with the community, whether it's other student athletes, whether it's professors who come to games, whether it's a local alum who who brings us over for a meal, um, or even or even mentoring, you know, partnerships that have happened with with some of our alums who who uh, live in town. And I think that. William & Mary is a special place because we do reach out and we do, as student athletes, love to get out into the community. And we've done a lot of great work, you know, in local clubs, um, you know, developing uh, mentor-mentee relationships. And it's so great for the student athletes to know that there's people out there who know who they are, what they do, what's important to them. And I think, uh, the more people we have in those roles, uh, the, the stronger we all become as, as the tribe community. That's great. Um, so we should talk a little bit about the All In campaign, and both of you have impressive backgrounds, uh, as do I, which is the behind me is the, uh, the drawing of the, of the athletics complex and what that'll look like when it's complete. Um, but one of the things we talk about the campaign, it's important for folks to know that our first priority is we have to get annual giving solidified and for folks to understand that we need annual giving each and every year. Uh, and if you haven't heard me say it, uh, at least 15% and sometimes as much as 20% or more of William Mary Athletics budget comes from annual contributions. Um, so it truly is the foundation of our budget. And the only reason we're able to compete at Division One Athletics, the highest level of the NCAA, uh, is because of the caliber of our people here. But one of the key facets for the entirety of the program is that we re-envision our home for William Mary Athletics. Uh, and some of the folks watching this will uh, may actually recall when uh, William and Mary Hall was erected almost 50 years ago, and it hasn't changed much since then. Um, and so I just wonder if um, we could talk a little bit about the athletics complex. And, um, and Julie, if you would mind start off just talking about what the complex, and particularly the Sports Performance Center and the new spaces for sports medicine and strength and conditioning, how will that benefit all sports and all of our student athletes? Um, first of all, having a high performance center where you can put your strength and conditioning staff, your trainers, uh, medical staff all in one place is 
uh, not only creates a central location for, for all of our student athletes, but also uh, makes it really economical with their time. And I think student athletes are always eking out 15 minutes here and 15 minutes there. And to be able to get everything in one place will be amazing. Um, I think the high performance model is a relatively new one. And I think we can be on the cutting edge in terms of how we're training kids and how they're going to develop over our, our four years. So um, I would say that it's, you know, we're right on the cusp of something really special, number one, and to have a place where all the athletes can come and gather um, is, is really special. And I think for the whole community um, to know that, you know, we are working to develop as best we can, uh, just like we do in the classroom. I think that's right. And um, for some of the folks on the call uh, in this interim period, I've discovered to an even greater degree just how linked um, all of the training aspects, whether it's the coaches and the skill instruction, the strength and conditioning coaches, uh, really whose work is to condition our athletes one in a way um, to allow them to compete uh, to the best of their ability and to maximize their talent, but also just in the notion of you do that work also to prevent injury uh, and soft tissue injury. And then the link that that is to sports medicine and just how closely all of those folks work together. Um, it comes through as one training experience effectively for the student athlete, but there are multiple aspects um, that play into that. And Dana, I just wonder if you would talk a little bit further um, about, about how, how, how much of a difference that the athletics complex would make for the basketball program, uh, the men's and women's programs, as well as, as well as volleyball with all the demands on the arena right now. Yeah, Jeremy, the first thing is, is just the functionality piece. And I, I've said this time and time again, that Kaplan Arena is a fantastic facility for us to practice in when it's available. And, you know, unfortunately, there are times when it's not, whether it be uh, conflicts with other uh, sports teams, whether it be their practices or their games, uh, whether the, the college or the university needs it for a function or maybe someone from off off campus is, is utilizing Kaplan. There, there, there's a number of times that we really struggle to, to get in there. Um, and, and then in addition to getting in there, also trying to find time outside of our practice where guys want to get in the gym and work on their game and, and really try to develop. So, you know, the functionality piece uh, is huge, just having more space for, for all of us to use. Uh, and then the second piece is recruiting. And, you know, we had a young man that we were recruiting um, the first year I was here and he said, coach, I love everything about this place. It's a beautiful campus, the education, the degree, the alumni network. I mean, it's incredible, but you're the only school that's recruiting me that doesn't have a practice facility. And, you know, we, as I mentioned earlier, we want to recruit guys that really, really want to achieve at a high level, both basketball and uh, academically and, and to help them get to where they want to. From a basketball standpoint, we want to be able to offer them the facilities that they need to do that. So um, those will be the two areas that it will really, really help our programs. And, and as you also mentioned, the women's team uh, and volleyball as well. Thanks, Dane. Um, so let's, let's talk a little bit more about what it's been like to coach during pandemic. Uh, I've taken up saying this is a season like no other and God willing, there will never be another season like it. Uh, but just wonder if you might talk about what it's like um, to, to actually sort of lead and care for young women, uh, young women and men and student athletes as we go through this time. And so, um, Julie, I wonder if you would talk a little bit about how your team is managing. I know you're in season right now um, and the notion of what chasing a championship in spring is like when you're competing in pandemic. Yes. Well, I, I think for us, uh, if we had, you know, if you had said a year ago that we, we'd even have a season, we, we might have balked at that. And so I think we feel very very grateful that we have a season at all. And I think it's ultimately changed the perspective of, of kind of everything in our program. We spent so much time on Zoom and before we came back to campus with, with many prominent alums from Jill Ellis to Steve Christie to, uh, you know, Mark McLaughlin, a, a former wrestler who's a brain surgeon. And, and we learned so much about them and we learned how special our ties are to uh, our alums. And I think once we got outside and we knew there was going to be a season that it almost feels like every day is so special. Um, you see a lot of programs that have been shut down and we've been very fortunate. And when we walk through the gates every day, we call it Soccer Island. And it's a place where we can live in the present, um, compete really hard and kind of forget about what's going on uh, for that little bit of time. And I think that um, we're so grateful to everybody who's uh, enabled and allowed us to have that season. Um, obviously, so many people in the conference, but but more importantly, all the people in the athletics department. 
So for us, it's one day at a time. Uh, we're working on balancing seniors having a great last season with getting underclassmen experience, putting it all together, trying to stay healthy. Um, so I think that's been the best approach for us is, is one day at a time and let's cherish every moment. I, I really like the idea of Soccer Island. And one of the things I've noticed just sort of making my way around to uh, a lot of the practices is just that there's this great Alan Iverson quote on, you know, practice, we're talking about practice and like the joy that practice actually is this year, um, that the student athletes want to be there. Uh, I sort of teased you and all the other coaches, this may be the most interested in practice that your student athletes ever will be um, because it is just such a relief and a break from the norm. And um, Dane, you and Coach Swanson were actually, as we were sort of working through basketball as the first, you, you were really kind of the first to go through um, a lot of these things. And Julie mentioned, you know, Soccer Island and the thought of being able to take off your mask and in that island of, of facility in which you're tested with all those other individuals. Um, I can remember a moment early in your season where we were talking, are we going to be allowed to take off our mask to scrimmage or do we have to keep scrimmaging in the mask and that kind of thing? And um, I just wonder if you talk about what the journey for this season was like for you. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think the first thing is just the amount of collaboration that went into to provide an opportunity for all of us to compete. And, you know, it was very, very clearly stated. I think we all had the same goals that we wanted to compete as as much as we could, as, but, but it was always going to be done with the safety and welfare of our student athletes and, and coaches at the forefront of every decision. And, you know, to, able to, get, to be able to get through an entire season um, was, was really pretty impressive. And, you know, the word that we used all the time through our season was having perspective. And, you know, we, we, we talked about it when we suffered some setbacks, if it were pauses or games canceled or, or, or whatever it may be that you faced, or, or maybe you had to wear a mask a little longer than you wanted to in practice. And, you know, we, we just told our guys, look, if we go through a, a global pandemic and, you know, the biggest concern we all have is, um, you know, I got to wear a mask a little bit more than I want to, or, or, or we miss a couple of games, we're, we're really fortunate, if, you know, if that's the case. Uh, but I think the other side of perspective is, again, I think it, I think it showed all of us how important sports are and, and how much how much we care and, and whether it be practice, whether it be competing uh, or, or whether you're a fan and a member of the community, you know, I, I know uh, how many people missed being in the, in Kaplan this year and, and just to, having that game experience and that camaraderie you have with complete strangers and, and, and bonding over, you know, guys that are out there trying to put a ball in a hoop. And, you know, it's, it's, it's really, um, I, I just think the perspective of, of what sports can do for us in our society and our community um, what, what really, really was, what was shown this through this pandemic. And um, it was, it was great to be able to compete. And uh, I really hope it's the last season that we ever have to do like that. <laughs> I, th I think we could all agree on that. And um, I, I would agree with that in the way that you and Julia have described it. I, I still remember lacrosse, was the first game that I was at where we were able to do a little bit larger, um, a little bit larger player pass list. And so there were a few more people there than normal. Um, and I can actually remember it was a game that was in the balance and, you know, you sort of sort of feel your emotions moved and you're just rooting for your team. And I, I thought about it afterwards. I was like, this is the most normal I have felt um, in a year. Uh, and, it, and it was at a women's lacrosse game and just sort of feeling the emotions of athletics. Uh, and I know that there are many who are watching this call who can't wait to be back together again. Uh, in a way very facility and cheering on the tribe. But um, I will leave you with uh, one of the challenges I've given to our coaches uh, who I think have come together remarkably well. Uh, I mentioned that Dane and Ed Swanson were among the first to go through like the conversations that have happened among coaches about how have you handled this in regard to travel um, and sort of that collaboration and all those things has just been incredible. But um, what I've said more than anything else to the coaches is thanks for all you do to lead and care for your team. Uh, and we've had two of our very best uh, coaches who do that and, and just extraordinary amounts to talk today. And so uh, we look forward to being together with the old guard and carrying on the traditions of William Mary athletics in the future. In the meantime, we hope you all stay healthy and well, and uh, we'll look forward to talking to, to our student athletes in just a moment. Thanks for being here tonight. And uh, we'll transition and talk to a couple of student athletes now. Want to move to two of our very best student athletes. Now I'm happy to welcome Nyla Pollard and Carl Fowler with us to the program. Nyla is a senior guard on the women's basketball team from Virginia Beach, Virginia. She's majoring in sociology and in elementary education. And Carl is a junior defensive lineman on the football team from Durham, North Carolina. And after completing his undergraduate degree in three years, majoring in public policy with a minor in management and organizational leadership, he's now a first year law student in the law school. So thank you both for being here. All right, let's jump right into a few questions. 
uh, one of the favorite for folks to hear is, Nyla Carl, when you all were looking at uh, colleges for your selection, what drew you to William and Mary? Nyla, would you go first? Yeah, of course. So when choosing colleges, I ultimately chose William and Mary first just because I value so much being close to home. And as you said, I'm from Virginia Beach. Uh, and after my four years, I realized just how important that was and being able to have that family support at my games and just for any matters was really important to me. Uh, and another reason is even when I was visiting the school before I had committed, my teammates and just the entire athletic community was just extremely welcoming. And I really loved that. And I found that throughout my years and over the years that people were even more welcoming among the athletic community. So I knew that coming into this, that I was going to be around people that I wanted to be around. And finally, just my long-term goals, uh, academically and professionally, I knew that I could make strides toward them uh, and take steps that I wanted to take um, for my future at William & Mary. So that was my ultimate decision. Yeah, it was great to hear you talk about community. Now, you've done a lot to, um, to build community among your teammates and others. So I think you've certainly expanded that uh, for the other recruits and student athletes who come here as well. So appreciate all your work there. Carl, how about you when you were looking at schools? Yeah, I'll just say um, if Nyla answers every question first, I probably won't have uh, many extra comments to add. Um, she definitely hit the nail on the head um, as far as community, you know, in the recruiting process. Um, all of us, you know, are exposed to a lot of different cultures, team, campus cultures. Um, and I was really attracted to the team culture we had here at William and Mary. Um, and, and then similarly, I was, I was considering a, a number of Ivy leagues when it came down to it. Um, and, and a huge difference that William Mary offers is that athletic scholarship, uh, which I've been blessed to be on for the last couple of years. Um, and when you add in, like Nyla said, the opportunities for both athletic and, you know, professional development, um, kind of what that means for, for the years to come, it, it seemed like kind of an easy choice. Well, I appreciate too. Both of you talked about opportunities and you've certainly made the most of the academic opportunities here at William & Mary. I wonder if you might just talk a little bit further about the experience of being a student athlete and the lessons you've learned there uh, in addition to your academic pursuits. So um, based on Carl's compliment, Nyla, if you go first, what are some of the lessons you've learned in a as a student athlete that complement your academic work? Of course. I think one extremely valuable thing that you do get by being an athlete, as well as a student, but especially being an athlete, uh, is just handling adversity. And it sounds so cliche, but it's real. And I think especially this past year, uh, we've seen such an emphasis on that uh, and just learning not only how to control yourself during tough situations, but also having a group of people around you, a team, and even coaching staffs, and there's just so many moving parts. So you really learn, you know, how to be a professional <laughs> in a different sense than you do in the classroom. Uh, and I just think that's so invaluable. And I've really appreciated that being a student athlete. Yeah, I would say similarly. Um, you know, I think that especially this year, you saw student organizations by and large, um, you, know, you know, they, they did their best. Um, but in many ways, the student organization life looked different on campus. I can't speak too much for, for undergrad, but I know law school, many student, or, student organizations, um, you know, just didn't do anything at all. And, and that's not, not to any fault of, of anyone's, but um, being a leader on the team, you don't really have that option. You can't, you know, call it in for, for the, for the fall. Um, or the spring for that matter. So, you know, kind of learning how to adapt on the go, um, adjust to, you know, who knows what is going on, um, the, a football game and a football season, um, and, and then a year in, in a pandemic, those are all pretty rapidly changing situations. Um, and just learning how to lead and, and inhabit those spaces, I think is, is something that I get from athletics that I probably wouldn't get otherwise. Mm. I appreciate it in both your responses. Uh, there actually is a psychological term of grit, um, you know, and sort of this notion of stick to itiveness. And, and I think that particularly in this year, um, obviously both of you and your teammates and your fellow student athletes have really, uh, sometimes people talk about the grind and getting through the day and that kind of thing, but actually just the success, um, the success that completing a season is uh, in a year where it wasn't guaranteed. And let's, let's talk a little bit more about leadership. And, and Nyla, you've heard us say often, uh, that one of the things that C-suite executive leaders who are women uh, have as a common trait in their background, the majority of them competed in athletics uh, at some point in their career. And I just wondered if you might talk about your journey and development as a leader 
uh, as a student and a student athlete here at William & Mary. Of course. And I love that you asked that because, you know, I plan to land myself in that majority you speak of. Uh, so I really think that, you know, my time here at William & Mary, not only have I made like such valuable connections and met so many amazing people that I think have helped me to prepare to reach that goal, um, but also just different positions that I've been put in or I've put myself in to help me lead. And that's athletics and outside of athletics. Uh, but specifically when thinking about sport and thinking about leading the team this year, like as a senior on the team and leading my team through a season during a pandemic. And there's so many different factors to consider. Uh, I think it's really hard to get that experience without being on the ground and working it, you know? Uh, so just having to consider not only the athletics part of it, but also where people are mentally and where people are academically and like people miss home and family and things are going on. There's just so many different things to consider. Uh, so to be able to lead the team in this season, I think really prepared me to lead beyond the field or not the field, but beyond the court and beyond the classroom. Um, so yeah, I really think it makes sense. You know, that statistic you speak of, it makes so much sense. And I think you learn so much and it just carries over because it's what you work on, work on and perfect over your four years in college. Carl, sorry, Carl, I should say same question, although I'm not potentially not a, uh, an executive woman as an executive and aspiring leader. Uh, what are some of the lessons and leaderships you've learned? Sure. So I think, I think the main thing is this idea of manufacturing an attitude. Um, we talk about it a lot just in terms of, you know, the season is a grind and then the off season is a grind. Um, and, and there's not much room in between to, to kind of relax. So this idea of, you know, you wake up in the morning and, and you decide that you're going to have the positive attitude that you're going to come to work. Um, and I think that's really important and can, you know, be carried to all aspects of life that, you know, if you decide that things are, are maybe not as bad as they seem, um, and then you're going to get, you know, better things coming out of it at the end. Um, by the way, I uh, really enjoyed this conversation. I'm reminded that uh, it's the first time that we've had a chance to catch up in a while. Um, I, I really enjoy how both of you sort of talk about you don't get to choose when you are a leader uh, and having earned that stature on your team and built that respect over time. Um, every day you come as a leader, like the younger players and that other teammates are looking at you and saying, hey, um, how are we going to follow your lead today? And so the notion of being able to maintain that standard each and every day uh, is something that someone's so great to hear you talk about. Um, it would also be wonderful. You both have marvelous backgrounds uh, in talking and thinking about the All In campaign. Um, and would just wonder if you talk about some of the things that excite you, uh, excite you in the campaign. And Carl, would you be willing to go first this time? We'll reverse the order. Yeah, I, I don't know that Nyla and I will have the same answer here. Um, my answer is pretty cheap and easy as a defensive lineman on the football team. Um, I'm certainly most excited about uh, a new weight room, um, a weight room that, you know, isn't in the basement of the building, um, new equipment, all of that. I think that's going to be really huge for, for not only recruiting, but also just day to day, what it looks like being a student athlete at William & Mary. So I'm really excited about that aspect of of the all-in campaign and, and the new facility coming in. The great thing, Carl, is the answer was cheap and easy. The strength and conditioning center will not be, and so we welcome all the uh, all the support we can have there. And so, Nile, after that cheesy transition, what are some of the things that excite you about the campaign? I am also excited about the weight room, actually, Carl. Um, <laughs> so we could have the same answer, uh, but also I think similarly, even the practice gym that's coming along as part of the facility is huge. And I can speak for myself as well as I'm sure all of my teammates and incoming uh, student athletes and basketball players, because of course, having one gym is difficult. And I think it may not be as easily perceived unless you are, you know, the athlete in that sport, but just having to find that scheduling time between, you know, basketball, men's and women's and volleyball and just the different sports who compete there. Uh, and it's just valuable in so many different ways and even being able to practice outside of your sport so you can perform better when it is time for the game. Uh, so you have to split that time, not only for team practice, but also individual preparation. So in so many ways, that'll be helpful. Uh, so I'm definitely most excited about that. Well, I also appreciate that uh, um, you both mentioned sort of the, the the scheduling aspect of sort of having and now have if when we have two strength facilities, the freedom that that'll give student athletes and scheduling as well as um, the ability to do skill improvement, all those kind of things. So those those really are key facets to the facility um, as part of the campaign. We're, we're looking forward to having it. Um, 
so a couple more questions here. Uh, can't wait to, I'm, I'm curious to hear how you respond to this because you both have been so well connected um, throughout campus and the university. And so this doesn't have to be someone in William Mary Athletics, uh, but I just wondered if you'd comment on who your biggest mentors have been uh, in, in your time at William & Mary and, and the folks that you've really connected with and have connected with you. Carl, you wanna go first on this one? Yeah, I can. Um, so, so the first one is in fact uh, connected to William Mary Athletics. Jason Sims has been a huge mentor for me. Um, that name probably rings a bell. Um, but I, I don't say it lightly. Um, I think Jason is one of the main reasons that I, I've made it to the point that I have today. Um, I spent a lot of time in his office, probably more than Jason uh, would have liked, um, but he, he was super helpful uh, just in terms of you know hearing, hearing this is my goal, this is my plan, believing in it, and, and then helping me get to, to this point. Um, so thanks, Jason. Um, uh, another one would be Professor Jackson Sasser, um, who, whose name is, is starting to get a little bit of buzz. He was on the Martin Luther King um, talk, I guess, a month ago or so now. Um, but I've been in a couple classes with him in undergrad, um, and, and he was one of the first professors that really reached out to me and try to make a connection outside of just the classroom. Um, I ended up going on a study away trip with them down to Alabama with a small class, learned a lot there. And that was just, a, it is a continuing and really great connection that I have um, with the school. And then lastly, um, before I turn it over to Nyla, I would say Ted Hefter, uh, one of my teammates, he's moving on now, um, but started as a true walk-on quarterback and, and ended up this semester a scholarship starting QB. Um, and I think that, you know, and everything that went into it, SAC president, all of that, just really impressive. And like I said before, all that stuff with manufacturing and attitude, positivity, energy, a lot of that came from Ted. So those three people, I think, really led the way for me. Well, I appreciate you saying that. And you probably caught when it caught me smile. Jason Sims gave me my first job that let me come to William & Mary. So uh, it never surprises me to hear a student athlete say that about Jason. I'm like, me too. You're in the Jason Sims club. Uh, people that helped you succeed here. Nyla? Yes, Jason is amazing. Um, <laughs> but very similar to Carl's last answer, um, when I think about my greatest mentors, I think my upperclassmen teammates uh, during my freshman and sophomore year specifically, uh, even thinking about Bianca Boggs, which is a name I'm sure many people will remember, and even Chandler Smith, they were just so amazing. One, while I was here and teaching me how to be a great teammate and be a great leader. So when I became an upperclassman, I could do that same thing, but also off the court. And they helped me so much with resume and cover letters and landing my first internship. And they've just been an amazing support system, even this year when things with my senior season, <laughs> you know, didn't go as planned. They were just really supportive and always there, uh, not physically, but <laughs> always there to support. And I just think in a lot of ways, they really have served as mentors and I value those relationships so much because we became such great friends. But even before we were friends, they began taking me under their wing and teaching me the right ways and how to be successful and so many other things. So I'm really appreciative of them. I love that both your answers included um, teammates and, uh, and, and older teammates and things like that. Uh, and one of the great things that unites William Mary Athletics is the notion that, um, that that's been a tradition here. Uh, for a long time, the, the, the older students mentoring the younger students, and it continues even after they graduate, um, at least 15 and sometimes as much as 20% of our annual budget in athletics comes from um, annual giving contributions that are led by alumni and friends. And so I just wondered if you might talk about what it means to you to be part of that tradition. Um, and Nyla, to think about, you know, as Bianca and Chandler were to you to, to think about who you've been to some younger students, and just what it means to you to be part of a, a community that, that enjoys such great support from alumni and friends. Yeah, I would just emphasize again how much it really does mean. And I think the teammates as well, but also the community, you know, I think the people who are constantly at our games that are always there for us. We've had people who this season maybe couldn't come out to the games, but have sent me pictures of them watching us on the TV. And it's just so heartwarming. So not as just a student athlete, but simply as a person. And I don't think people realize, or they probably do, that's why they do it, but it just means so much and it enhances the experience entirely. Um, and I just don't think I could express my gratitude enough to actually say how much it means, but just emphasizing everything you said. Well, Carl, you get to have the experience of playing in a stadium named for an alumnus. 
uh, and all those kind of things and the tradition that Hay for All is. What, what does it mean to you to be part of that William Mary ongoing tradition of community? Yeah, absolutely. You know, you mentioned the stadium name, but we also have, you know, the grandstand. Um, and then and then even below that, there's there's other names. Um, it, it, it means a ton, you know, we've got Hay for All, we've got the, we've got the QB club, there's all sorts of support, you know, both financially and in terms of, you know, showing up on game day. Um, like Nyla said, the, the numbers obviously couldn't be there this spring. Um, we look forward to, to those, you know, hopefully being back in the fall. Um, but, but it means a lot, you know, when we do our game day walk from the calf down to the, the stadium and, and there's people who aren't our parents lined up cheering us on, you know, um, that that's really important. And, and it, like Nyla was saying, just, it, it improves the whole experience as a student athlete, when you know that there are people, you know, in the community and then, you know, really across the country and maybe even the world that are, that are rooting us on and, and looking forward to us succeed. Well, thank you both for being here. Uh, as we talked about with all of your academic accomplishments, that requires a great deal of time. So I uh, appreciate you making the time to be here. And um, knowing that largely our audience is the old guard, I can assure you that there are so many of them who look forward to being back in Kaplan Arena and Sable Stadium and all the facilities um, next year. And so thanks to each of you who took the time to be with us. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed hearing from, from our four insiders, two coaches and two student athletes. Uh, about their views on what it means to be part of this William Mary community of which you all are so great a part. Uh, if you have additional questions about the campaign, you can learn more at www.tribeathletics.com backslash all in. Uh, and if you have any trouble finding that, you can simply email anyone on the website and we'll be happy to direct you there. Uh, but thank you again for being with us. We appreciate all you do for William Mary Athletics and go tribe. Have a great day.